Hey guys, Reese here with Cranberry Alarm RI3D. Today I'm going to be taking a little deep dive on our CAD. I'm going to be going over all of our components, where we are at, what our future plans may be, and things to consider about this game. Coming up on First Updates Now. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So taking a look at the CAD, um, there's a lot about this CAD that is fairly rushed just to, you know, to the nature of the robot in three days. For example, we're missing an entire left side of our drive or right side, left side of our drivetrain. Um, there's a few that we're missing bolts in multiple locations, we're missing an electrical panel. But for the most part, this will kind of give you an overview of what our robot will be doing. Um, our hope is to continue to iterate on this robot and add more mechanisms as we go. Um, but right now, this is going to be our goal moving forward and our vision. And as we learn new uh, new problems and solve more problems, um, we'll continue to add to this robot. The few main mechanisms on this robot is obvious, starting with our drivetrain. Um, as mentioned before, this is our AM14U4 drivetrain. Um, it's 26 by 28, running our Ford Neos. Um, that can be seen here. Um, our next uh, mechanism is going to be our intake uh, and this is going to be our ground intake that we're going to be using to pick up the notes from the ground and then we're going to be using a pass passover system to pass this um, the note over to the uh, shooter and that brings us on to our next mechanism which is the shooter so this is going to be powered by two neo vortexes and we're going to be utilizing the four inch thrifty bot um, hard wheels that are 35a i believe um, and we're going to be using this. We found that this was a really good angle to be at for uh, shooting into the speaker and shooting into the amp. Um, and this is what we uh, landed on. So I'm going to dive in a little bit deeper um, into the intake. Um, so this will be the starting configuration of the intake. Uh, we were really happy with the um, poly belt intake that we made um, on uh, Saturday. Um, <clears throat> And we, we liked, you know, everything that I was doing, how fast it was, how uh, touch and go it was. Um, but the big problem with it is that it was big, bulky, and uh, it was going to be really hard to package this, especially if we were doing uh, planning on putting in another system that will basically control the handover from the um, intake to the shooter. Um, so instead of adding another system, we decided to find a way to integrate the intake into the shooter. Um, so this is where we landed on with a um, rotating intake. Um, this is pretty commonly seen in most FRC. A lot of a lot of teams will do this um, to kind of store their intake during uh, um, in starting configuration. Um, we're doing this one to also keep it in our starting configuration and also to help us with the handover from the intake from the ground to the shooter. Uh, so this is going to be it. It's going to be powered by this Neo here. This is currently a one stage in the CAD, um, but likely once we kind of get a little bit more, we're going to play around with our ratios. We're going to do some calculations, and we're going to figure out what ratio really works here for us. Um, likely, I, I'm going to expect this to be something higher, probably closer to 60 to 1, 80 to 1, somewhere around there. Um, this is going to be driving this one-to-one -one gear ratio. It's important for us to use these big steel gears here. Um, I believe these are aluminum gears, but I went ahead and just pulled them as fast as I could. Um, but these will be steel, steel gears um, in reality, uh, and these are going to be. This is going to be powering this gear, which is then going to be bolted directly to this piece of polycarbonate right here, um, and this is going to allow for a really solid torque transfer um, and help a lot with uh, the slop in the system. Um, it's important to to bolt the the gear directly to the polycarbonate instead of driving it through the hex axle. Because um, that would be just a tolerant stack up and you're going to get a lot of slop in your system. So bolting it directly to the polycarbonate is going to help us a lot uh, in terms of accuracy of this system. And then it's going to be driving this axle, axle across and driving it to this hex axle here. Um, and this is just meant to be support. Most of the, the main uh, torque is going to be driven through this connection right here. Um, and that will allow the entire intake to um, fold out. So as we fold this out, uh, this is now going to be the stowed position. I don't have it uh, shown here, but the bumpers are um, right here. And then this point right here the um, will actually sit up against the plywood on the bumpers, and it'll kind of act as a hard stop. We're going to put a soft stop in there in, in software, but it's good to also have a hard stop just as a little bit of protection. At this point, um, our, 
our bottom wheel, which I like to call the kicker, is about a quarter inch off the ground. Um, this is due to a little bit of variance. You want to have a little bit of room. Um, if you kind of nail in your design, you may be able to push that really close to the ground. This right here, currently it's sitting at one and a quarter uh, inches off the ground, and that's that's the bottom point. So that's going to be the tangent off the ground. Um, we're thinking about moving this down to one and a half. The poly belt system that we made on Saturday was actually sitting at one and a half. Um, however, that's going to be some room that we need to play with. Uh, and this is basically going to, in this position, it looks like the, the note is going through the ground, but actually what's going to happen here is that our, um, it's just going to merely bend the note, and we're going to hold on to it really tightly. And then that's going to allow us to, then once we've got pulled it in, um, it's going to allow us to then rotate, and uh, it'll hopefully then be flat for us right there. One more important thing to note is that because we're using um, the two inch thrifty squishy wheels, um, we're running a hex axle here and this is gonna be really prone to damages during uh, while the, uh, the intake is out. And if it takes a collision, um, it's gonna be pretty high likelihood that that axle is gonna bend and it's gonna put us out of an intake for the match. Uh, so it's really, really important to put this uh, piece of peanut here, which I think is a really, really good option for um, protecting your axles. Um, this is going to be two, uh, <coughs> you can use Andy Mark's um, quarter 20 uh, self-tapping screws and just uh, screw it right into here and you should be good to go. There's many other options you can use here. You can put a piece of two by one here. You can put a piece of one by one um, angle, anything that will fit on there really nicely. But my personal favorite is the peanut just because I think it packages the, uh, the um, screws, the, the fastening of it and the rigidity all in one. We need to make a few adjustments right here on these churros. These churros are not only meant to be kind of support for the entire intake, but also to kind of guide the uh, note and make sure it kind of stays um, straight. We're gonna, uh, it, we don't have it pictured in here, but we're gonna be planning to add a polycarbonate strip on the back here. That'll be kind of form a, a, an arc on the back there. And that'll work to not only center the, uh, the note, but it also to prevent it from going back any further. And this will also, this will be very important for the handoff system. Because um, this will allow us to um, space the note exactly where we want it. For driving the wheels, uh, we're going to be using this needle right here on a, on a 3 to 1 ratio. Um, this is also something that is really cool to be using a max planetary because if you run everything 1 to 1 and you run a 3 to 1, um, and then you end up finding later that you know it's too fast for you, you want a little bit more torque, um, you can end up changing that to a 4 to 1 or 5 to 1, or, or I believe they go to 6 to 1. Um, and this entire system is going to be ran one-to-one. -one. So we're going to be running this belt down to here, and then this belt, another belt over to here, and then that's going to be the idler is then going to run a gear to invert the direction so that we can pull in the note. And that basically covers most of the system um, for the intake. And from there, we're going to head and uh, fold the intake back in to starting configuration once we have a note. And that will allow us to then point towards the shooter. Um, and so this is going to basically be kind of an interference fit with the note. So you can see here the note is kind of passing through. Um, and that's something that we desired because we want to be able to push the, the note up against it and um, be able to you know, shove it through and you know, have some positive force on that. We're, we have some questions about you know, maybe if, the, if we don't get it out far enough, maybe it'll fall back and slip through here. Um, that's something that we have yet to evaluate. But for now, um, we think we might, this might work out really well for us. From there... The uh, shooter it has this cutout right here, um, the semicircle cutout right here to allow the the note to pass through um, and then sit on that bottom piece of polycarbonate. From there, the polycarbonate has a, mounted to it these two neo vortexes, which are mounted one to one to these to these um, these wheels right here. It's going to be not pictured on here. Um, like I said, it's still in a rush. <laughs> the um, Axle is going to be running through and it's going to come up here to some pulleys that are going to be running one to one to here. Um, there could be an option here that if you want, you could overdrive one of the, the speed, uh, one of these. So you could even overdrive one of these. Um, however, I do recommend running these one to one is just uh, provide for some really consistent shooting. Um, I know we never really got a chance to test out um, powering just one side. We we're really, really happy with powering both sides and getting that knuckleball shot. Um, we found we, the shots were really consistent, it was predictable, and that was really important for us. And um, that's ultimately led us to this design. 
Uh, we wanted to use a little bit more COTS brackets than we did. Um, we are going to be using these uh, custom made uh, brackets here that kind of line up exactly to what we need to help really position the shooter in the exact position that we want it, the exact angle and position in space. We're going to be mounting these. The main uh, subframe is going to be kind of mounted to the frame using these sets of 2x1 here. The, the 2x1 right here is featuring these tube nuts, which are kind of hard to see, but that's going to be mounted um, through the frame. So the frame will actually be held together through the um, tube nut right there. And that's going to allow us to pop a bolt from the bottom and into there and tie it off really nicely. And the same thing can be said on this side right here. Uh, we're going to pop a bolt up through this one hole right here and into there. And there may be a potential for us to drill out some of these holes on the side here and maybe pop some rivets or drill some more, uh, pop some more bolts in there, but that'll be yet to be figured out and once we evaluate the structural rigidity of the system. And from there, that mounts kind of the core. This is what really defines the whole geometry of the uh, arm, and that's kind of this. We have this currently sitting at, this 2 by one sitting at 60 degrees right now. Um, and this is kind of chosen because this is where we played around with it and we were really happy with the 60 degrees. Um, and it's a really easy number to concede. And if you can find a way to incorporate some COTS brackets, it can be a really easy implementation. Um, for us, I got really frustrated trying to mess with the COTS brackets, so I ended up just designing my own. Um, we're really happy with these. Uh, <clears throat> from there, we basically are kind of moving on to the sandwich. And this sandwich is kind of the whole flywheel assembly. And the core of this is going to be um, two pieces of polycarbonate sandwiching a piece of 2 by one And that 2 by one is uh, basically acting as a glorified spacer. Uh, and just to kind of give the right space. And we kind of found that with the with this, uh, note being two inches um, in thickness, um, having two and a quarter inches between each of the faces right there um, is the right amount of keeping the note contained, but also giving it enough room to slide through. And this is what we found uh, just kind of worked really well for us. We're going to be sliding some, just some plates in there, whatever we can really find that kind of gives us one quarter, uh, one eighth inch spacer on both sides. Um, you really could mount it flat to one side and then put a quarter on the other side. Uh, there's a lot of options right there, but we, for the ca for the sake of sym symmetry, we went ahead and just spaced them equally. And then there'll be some bearings in here on both sides to kind of really support that. Um, I think it's really important to have quarter inch here because I think it, you know, with, with a lot of vibrations, you're going to be running at high speeds there. Um, it's going to be really important to make sure that, that bearing is fully, fully constrained. Um, it's sometimes maybe good to have a nice press fit here. Um, and that'll, that'll reduce vibrations and, you know, help with some consistency. And secondly, we're going to be adding some rivets on the side of them. On the, to really constrain the bearings and make sure they stay connected to the um, polycarbonate plates. And also not pictured is um, some churro that we're going to be adding in between the belt or in between the wheels here. That's just going to, you know, really r rigidify that uh, um, this entire sandwich up. Uh, and that's just going to be some churro that's going to slide in there. Uh, and it's just going to make the whole thing a lot stronger. And that's about it for now. Um, we still have a lot to do. So uh, we're going to look to adding a climber, a couple other things to help with the amp. Um, but for now, this is what we got. Um, and we're excited to see what this is capable of. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to check out some of the CAD on Chief Delphi or first updates in our Discord. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to um, any of the members of Cranberry Alarm. And hopefully, we can get any of your questions answered. Thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to check out more videos of Cranberry Alarm RI3D on first updates now. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.